that is see what the ghuraba if our prophet said sallallahu alaihi wasallam and indeed he did say bada al islam ghariban wa si'ud ghariban kama bada fa tuba lil ghuraba wa kama qala sallallahu alaihi wasallam islam began strange as a strange entity and it will return the way it began strange as a strange entity again fa tuba lil ghuraba the same reward the blessing, the, the tree in paradise. For who? For the ghuraba, for those who are strange. <coughs> this notion of strangeness can be measured in many different ways. Essentially, those who are strange are those who are correct when those who are others are corrupt. That is from one extension of the hadith. Those who are righteous when the others are in fasad. The minority grouping who is correct when the rest of the people are in corruption. But let us see how that plays out in many different ways. But my focus today is to think about courage and bravery as a mark and as a measure of strangeness. Because who is brave? It's always a minority of people who are going to be brave and courage and principled enough to speak, to take a stance. That is a correct stance. And so we see that in the Quran. We see that with the best of people, with the prophets and the messengers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When we speak about Fir'aun, in the Fir'aun ala fil ard, Fir'aun exalted himself in the land. Well, what about Musa alayhi salam then? When Fir'aun said to Musa alayhi salam, and this is in the Quran, فَقَالَوْا فِرْعَوْنَ إِنِّي لَأَظُنُّكِ يَا مُوسَى مَسْحُورًا When Fir'aun said to Musa alayhi salam, Indeed, I see you, O Musa, as someone who is مَسْحُور, someone who is bewitched, touched by magic. And in the next ayah, it continues, and, and Musa alayhi salam says back to Fir'aun, وَإِنِّي لَأَظُنُّكَ يَا فِرْعَوْنُ مَتْبُورًا And indeed I see you, Fir'aun, as someone who is perished, who is destroyed already. Can you not feel that? Can you not feel the, the sentiment of bravery and courage in that discussion, the dialogue between the Nabi and the Zalim, between the Rasul and the Fir'aun, Fir'aun himself? He's saying, I see you as you're just possessed, touched by magic. And, Fir and Musa doesn't simply cower away, but he's bold and brave and courageous and says, I see you as someone who is destroyed already. So you see all these examples of bravery with Musa salam, and then others that we've just mentioned and other of the prophets and messengers. You see that true with the, you see that also with the best of them, our prophet Muhammad ibn Abdullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sahbihi wa salam. He was described He was the most uh, giving person, the most generous person to give in the cause of Allah. And he was also described in the same narration as the most courageous person. The bravest out of all of them. They would say when the fighting became tough in the battles, we would hide ourselves behind the Prophet of Allah وسلم, Because we knew he fought so bravely and so ferociously. During in Sahih Muslim the Hadith, when there was a, a loud noise in the early hours, in, in during when they were living in Medina, and they all panicked because they thought it was an enemy invading, and they all took their swords and their weapons and they took their horses and then they went out and who was there before all of them? The Prophet of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, on horseback without the saddle, unsaddled horse, ready to do what to defend his ummah sallallahu alaihi. And then you see the Sahaba, they learned from that. They were the first Ghuraba in our Ummah. Those who were strange. And the strangeness, well, and I mean the first element of strangeness is, is with regards to the belief. They were Muslimin, Mawahideen, in the presence of Mushrikeen. And that's what made them strange. They were a minority believers group in the midst of a majority disbelieving group. But there were also other elements that made them strange. And one was their courage and their bravery that made them strange. And so, for example, in that narration, when Ali ibn Abi Talib, may Allah be pleased with him, was asked, Man nas, who is the bravest person? And he said, Ali, Ali is asking them, sorry, who is the bravest? And they said, Anta ya Ali, you are the bravest person, O Ali. He said, me, I have not been challenged by anybody except that I have defeated him. But tell me truly, who is the bravest person? They said, la na'lam faman, we do not know who. 
He said Abu Bakr was the bravest person. Radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Why? He says because on the day of Badr, we made a tent for the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Faqulna, we said, who will come and defend the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? He said, for wallahi madana minna ahad. Nobody responded from us except Abu Bakr. Shahima ibn Saifi unsheathed his sword and he was ready to, to fight anybody who came between him and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He said, لَقَدْ رَأِيْتُهُ I saw him. And the mushrikeen, they would tug him. وَهَذَا يُتَلْتِلُهُ وَهَذَا يُضْرِبُهُ This one is tugging and pulling him. This one is punching him. And they're saying to him, أَنْتَ الَّذِي جَعَلْتَ الْإِلَاهَةَ إِلَاهًا وَاحِدًا You're the one who turned all of our God into one God. He said, Wallahi, by Allah, none of us came to his defense on that day except Abu Bakr. For he came... But he's punching this one back and pulling that one back. And he's saying to them, Would you kill a man because he says, My Lord is Allah? Ali gets up from the minbar and he's weeping. Until his bed, his bed is soaking with tears. And he said, Tell me who is better? A mu'min min Ali Fir'aun, a believer from the time of Fir'aun. Or Abu Bakr, فَسَكَتَ الْقَوْمَ And they're silent. He said, by Allah, the whole earth full of believers in the time of Fir'aun is not comparable to Abu Bakr. Why? Because those people had to hide their faith. This one he made open his faith. This one was defined with his faith. This one was open with his faith. And we sometimes forget the likes of Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu ta'ala an. What was it in Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, aside from the fact that he was one of those men of Qur'an, Sahib al-Qur'an, Hamil al-Qur'an, we forget in the early times, he would go to the Kaaba and read Qur'an. They would punch him black and blue because of him. He would go back home, he would go the next day and read Qur'an. They'd punch him black and blue because of him. He would go back and come back the third day and recite Qur'an. And they do the same thing again. <laughs> exemplifying for them a simple thing. We are not a people of weakness or a people of cowardice. We are a people of strength and courage and bravery and principle. And he was showing them that. Likewise, you find so many examples from the Salaf period. Look at the example of Sa'id ibn Jubayr rahmatullah alayhi. You remember him as what? One of the greatest ulama of this ummah. Student of Umm al-Mu'mineen, Aisha, may Allah be pleased with her. Al-Habashi, forget even that, he was Abyssinian. Sa'id ibn Jubayr was Abyssinian. But we also forget that Sa'id ibn Jubayr in his encounter with Hajjaj ibn Yusuf al-Thaqafi, who was oppressing them, and had killed many of them. In that dialogue when he asked Sa'id, Ma ismuk, what's your name? He said, Sa'id ibn Jubayr. Hajjaj says, Anta Shaqi ibn Qusayr. You reverse. Sa'id, the one who is, has felicity, happiness, and Jubayr, the one that mends. He says, Anta Shaqi, you are wretched. And Qusayr, the one that breaks. He says to him, Ummi kanat alam bi ismi mink. My mother knew your, my name better than you do. He says, Shaqita ummak wa shaqita anta. Shaqiat ummak wa shaqita anta. Your mother is wretched and you are wretched. He said, Al Ghayb Allah, Yalamu Ghayrak. The one who knows the unseen is someone other than you. Now, he, did he have to say all of that? It goes on, by the way. But did he have to say all of that? No. What is he doing? He's exemplifying to him what? The principle of courage and bravery. We are not a people who are weak in that respect. Hajjah says, You know, I will turn your world into fire. No, not in Allah. He says, لو علمت أن ذلك بيدك لاتخذتك إله. If I knew that power was in your hands, I would have taken you as God. And it continues. And he says to him in one part, he says, you know, اختل نفسك يا يا سعيد. Choose for yourself, O سعيد. قتلة. Choose a killing for yourself, a way of killing for yourself, because I'm going to kill you in a second. What does he reply back? He says, اختر أنت يا حجاج. You choose, O oh Hajjaj, for Wallahi, because by Allah, you will not kill me today 
except Allah will kill you the same way in the Akhir. Did he have to say that? No. Sa'id says, kill him. What does Hajjad say? He turns his, Sa'id say, he turns his face towards Qibla and says, إِنِّي وَجَّهْتُ وَجْهِ لِلَّذِي فَطَرَ السَّمَوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضَ حَنِيفًا وَمَا أَنَا مِنَ الْمُشْرِكِينَ I turn my face towards Allah, the one who created and originated the heavens and the earth. Hanifa. It's only for him, purely for him. And I'm not one of the mushrikeen. Hajjaj sees that. He says, turn his face away from the Qibla. What does Sa'id say? فَإِنَّمَا تَوَلُّوا فَثَمَّ وَجْهُ اللَّهُ Wherever you turn, there is a face of Allah. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. He said, throw him on the floor. They threw him on the floor. What did he say? مِنْهَا خَلَقَنَاكُمْ وَفِيهَا نُعِيدُكُمْ وَمِنْهَا نُخْرِجُكُمْ تَارَةٍ أُخْرَى The eye in the Qur'an is from the earth you were created. And to the earth you will go back. And from the earth you will come out a second time. So they just slaughter him and they, they, slaughter, they killed him. But look at the bravery. That is all I want to say. We speak about غُرَبَى أَمْ يُغَرِيبَ by way of your Iman and your Tawheed and your Qur'an the ulama, they all say the, the Qur'an it establishes a strangeness in you but also the bravery and the courage and the spirit that those before us exemplified made them strange 